I am so excited today because today I have a very, very special edition episode for you all. And we're going to call it the Indie Special because I'm a little indie fiend girl right now. I've been listening to a lot of, it started out with German Dark Wave and then I got addicted to drum machine sounds. And then I was like, wait a second, indie music, like, and we're talking like, Max Fry, and we're talking Reese, and we just so happen to have them on the show today. So um, I now present to you Reese, followed by Max Fry, and this is our indie special. We have the official Reese cat in the frame. Yes. Tell us about this cat. I got her in April. Um, she's four months old, and she's called Bat. She was actually like really small when I got her, but now she's, I don't know. She doesn't mind. She doesn't mind being picked up and stuff. She's really That's like... crazy. Cats make me sad because my cat like ran away. Oh. I know. I had so... a mom when I was like younger. One of my cats. It was called Lily. I just came back and my mom was like, I don't know where it is. Uh, I saw you stage dive in a Max Fry green room. <laughs> that was the whole <laughs> thing. <laughs> that was silly. I forgot I did that. What's the story behind that? And I love seeing like the indie community just like loving up on each other and showing support yeah um it was sick max came out to the uk um he's doing a, a couple we were supporting thanks so much and i did a couple headlines headline in uh, london and uh amsterdam so i came out to london to support um i live here so i was like how could i not pull up it was mad fun max killed it performance was really sick and um yeah the green room was fun there was kind of like a elevated like thing like stairs thing and there was a couch and i was like should i jump on it i, I think i could and max was like showing up. let me record it so <laughs> that was the story behind that by the way this is like an indie special this is what we're calling it okay which yeah. is why i wanted to have like you and max on for this yeah because you guys are probably two of my favorite indie artists as well fuck yeah Thank and you. i just want to like give some like cred to like the genre mm -hmm. because like I was telling my co-host Jordan earlier about it and I was pretty much talking about like the fact that you can kind of make music like on your laptop and then yeah. and it can go like so widespread. Um, yeah. It's just so cool and so like right now, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's music Completely. right now. Yeah, I didn't really think it like, I don't know, for me, like not that it didn't seem possible or anything, but it was just like so out of, it was so far away and then I don't know, I made this song on a YouTube beat, like, it, this was when I was 17, I made a song, I went out skating, listened to a bunch of ecstasy, came back, typed in like, ecstasy, Let's go. Beat. and then went on YouTube and made a song in like 20 minutes, I was like, oh, this is cool, and then posted it on TikTok, and then the next day it blew up, and then that's how like teeth ended up happening, and <gasps> Yeah. So I actually discovered, yeah, that's how I actually discovered Teeth first. Yeah. Can we talk about Teeth? So that was yeah. made with a YouTube beat. Like, what's the yeah. juice on Teeth? So a lot of the the new music and stuff, I'm doing all the production on like guitar and stuff. But Teeth was when I was like first starting uh, music. I had um, I don't know. I didn't really have anything figured out. I was still kind of learning stuff. And to me, Teeth is like Teeth's a good song, but I feel like it's an idea I could have executed better. I mean, looking back at it now, I feel like. I don't Why? know. I love to. I don't know. I'd love to. It feels too stripped or like. I feel like I could make it better. I'd love to like make. I don't know how corny that'd be, but I'd love to make a teeth too, but like completely change it and like kind of like have like maybe you want something. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like maybe you want to dance. Maybe you want to dance. Make me wanna <laughs> dance. <laughs> yeah, some shit like that. I don't know. We could add. I don't know. I just love <laughs> to like upgrade it in a way. You know what I mean so zombie by the way yes speaking of like different tracks right now zombie is another cool one that you just released yeah literally um probably like that kind of production is just crack yeah. you know what i mean like the moment it turns on i'm pretty sure you know that no yeah how did you make zombie it was really sick i was in um i was in la at the time um i was working with a producer i work with a lot called alex craig um who's done other stuff like uh he did prada shoes while else me and you against the world and um we basically he put the drums down and i was like damn these drums are sick as fuck i was just like as soon as i heard the drums i was like like just button like nod in my head and mm -hmm. i was like okay where do we go from here and i was like it has to be bass no so i put the bass line down and then alex put the the weird glitchy kind of synth thing and it all just came together so well and then like the lyrics came took about like 20 minutes to like write and record and then i don't know the song was done like same day 
it was yeah. it was so it was so yeah. sick how many tracks right now are sitting on your computer that you're like i Ready don't know it's... they'll never see the uh, day of great. i would say i think i have like an hour 30 of music that i think is going to come out i don't know i don't know when i'm releasing it but it's coming out it's on song so I have probably about like 30, 40 songs, <laughs> so shit like that. That's crazy. Yeah. And it's funny because when I first met you like outside, well, it was inside of Max's show, funny story. Yeah. But then outside when I got to like hear like your dialect and stuff, I was like, yeah. I was like, wait, you're American? Like what's going on yeah. here? Because like, I like your acts, like I'm confused. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's you're malleable. From <laughs> Liverpool. Is it? Yeah, it's like it's weird. It's weird. Um, so it's like I have echolalia, so it's like um, because I have a lot of friends like Max and shit in the states that I talk to, I pick up on words and like the way I say shit. But like some shit doesn't change. Like I always say water or like cupboard. There are some things that like I feel like can never change, but some or like banana. Like I can never say I can never say banana. That's crazy. Banana. That feels too like un un unnatural for me. I don't know. Yeah. What was it like? Carl? I'm gonna jump in here real quick. Producer, hey. jump in. Yeah. Hey, hey Reese. Um, I want to point out that Dimmy has been spending time in the UK, and she has been picking up a little bit of English accent, English phrasing, oh, yeah. and stuff without. Uh, she kind of like goes up at the end of oh, her no. phrases sometimes, it's like, like yeah, yeah. you know. She she says, you know what I mean? She goes, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah, you go, you go around the open. Like, oh, no. Yeah. She goes, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so that's why I think it's interesting that she brought that up about you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll go back that's to my fun. whole. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Shout out, Jordan. Shout out to our producer, yeah. Jordan, for the day. Do you, um, many times, what's your favorite, like, British slang? British slang? Yeah, if you know any. Um... I feel like someone's like that's mental. That's mental, mental is a good one. Actually, I rate that. That's that's really good. Or right? Rate. Or rate. oh my god, I feel like there's so many. Like, what's some cool British slang right now that like what's like the now British slang that like wasn't like ten years ago or like five years ago? Like, what's right now like the new thing? Uh, I don't know. I'd say long. Well, I don't know. That's like I'd say 2010s onwards. But like long is just like if something is so. It's just I don't know. It's just a perfect word. It's like if something is. You don't want to do it. It's long. You don't want to like. That's long. You know what that's I mean? It's like that's long. too long. Like it's literally long. Is you don't want to do it. That's <laughs> like I found myself saying that a bunch because it's just like the ass. He said it's literally long. You, yeah, we say like be asked. Be asked of that. Yeah. What's up? Be asked. It's like. Um, oh, I can't be asked. Yeah, I just can't be asked of that. Yeah, I can't be asked. Really well, then you're like can't be asked. Can't be honest. Oh, yeah. Next one. Yeah. What was it like growing up in like Liverpool? I actually one time went all the way from Leeds to Liverpool, like oh, really? for a concert, like this random festival that I found, like this, like yeah. interest, I don't know what it was, but like yeah. Matt and like I didn't know what to expect because the Beatles are from Liverpool, right? Yep. So you're I'm just thinking it looks the like the wombats too. Is it okay? Yeah. No, there's some really cool like stuff like musically going down there and like yeah. But it was different. Like it was like almost like its own thing. So yeah, it's what I don't was it know. Like for you, growing up, it was kind of cool. I um I used to when I was like when I got out of high school, I started skating with some kids who were like crash outs. I don't know. They would do like a little crazy. Of yeah, like mm -hmm. I was always sober, but they would always do like they were like fifteen, eight to eighteen, like going into high school the next day doing like crazy stuff and i don't know i was skating with them for a minute but then i was like i need some other shit like i'm not good at skating like i was good at skating but i was never professional i was like there's no money in this shit for me i need to mm -hmm. find something <laughs> <laughs> so I, I ended up doing um, music yeah. instead yeah that's crazy do you remember yeah. that first song that you wrote that it, we were just like wait yeah. something just happened it would no i won't go lie it was so ass it was like it was so <laughs> cool like i knew it was bad but i was like I'm doing it though, like it's it, like it's 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 happening. I don't know. I remember my first song was on a young lean type beat, and it the auto tune was all the way cranked. And I don't know, it was very DIY, and my friend mixed it, Nimstar. And um, yeah, I don't know. We came a long way from young lean type beats. Like young lean and um, I don't know. I would say put on for Europe a fuck ton because I feel like mm -hmm. if people can't name like, especially like European like uh artists that aren't like. 
I don't know. When you think of a, like a European artist, you think of a band or you think of like somebody pop star. You don't think of like kind mm -hmm. of like underground really or mm -hmm. like coming up. I don't know. At least not to me, but That's... maybe maybe I need to get put on, Loki. Um, like almost like kind of like the maybe like beginning, like super, super, super beginning of like that kind of indie sort of DIY culture. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like what exactly, like if you could, what does that mean to you kind of being able to take a YouTube beat and yeah. like, and start a career off of it? You know what I mean? Really like you have like a talent for something. Yeah. It was crazy. Cause I mean, at the start I couldn't, at the start I was only really recording vocals and I was still kind of figuring out writing and yeah. then the writing I was kind of good at. And then I was like the production I wanted to take a spin at but like I'd never done anything like that before so I was just kind of I don't know I was at first I had this thing where I could like I was like okay I'm a guitarist but I'm not like a synth player like I only do guitar and mm -hmm. I was like you can like you don't have to know because I can't really play shit on on piano or shit mm -hmm. I can play stuff on guitar but I can't play shit on keyboard I can't really play shit on bass but to use it is like a tool almost uh yeah. and like to to lay like for example just to know like I need, I don't know, it's almost like a technique. It's like to paint in a certain way, you need a certain type of brush. So you're going to go for that type of instrument or whatever, or like that type of sound. And mm -hmm. I feel like, um, like analyzing and kind of just, for me, it was kind of realizing the thing that changed my like uh, music is like a uh, indie musician was kind of just realizing like, what do I need and what don't I need? Because I feel like a lot of the time, if you know what you're looking for, it's way easier to find it. You know what I mean? If I had this crazy yeah. thought. Yeah. about like the genre the other day too like mm -hmm. it's almost like it's very similar to like rock and roll like all of those sub genres of rock music that yeah. happened within the last few like decades right yeah. but like you take a, you take like you replace like the how complex it is to record like live yeah. instruments as mic a drum kit you replace that yeah. with like um like drum machine and like loops and like yeah, samples yeah. and that's kind of what indie music is you know it's yeah. like it's become its own form of like it's like a subgenre of rock in this really no, cool way because it's still like punk and like f you and yeah. like we're doing like diy vibes but it's like it's like you can do it in your room how cool is no, that you know what i mean completely. yeah that was the thing for the um we have a another song coming out uh, called screaming alone which is like completely proud of me and for that song, I made it literally here in my bedroom. I was like, um, I was manic. I was just on Ableton. I was just like, <laughs> I want to get this shit out. And I just had a MIDI keyboard plugged into like a little USB-C thing into my laptop. And then I think after about like an hour, an hour and a half, I got a, it was sampled. The drum kit is, or the drum loop is a Wheeland sample too, which is like crazy. You're talking about samples and shit. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, nah, it's, um, I don't know. It took about an hour and it was like, I think listening back to it or like playing it alive at shows thinking like, I just made this shit like sitting on my bed across like, wow. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So what's coming up next for you? You got like, what's like the, what's like the vibe? Like let's put ourselves in like a time portal okay. or something right now. Like in five years from now, when you look back at this like interview, right? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Oh fuck. Um, oh fuck what do i what do yeah I, what where do you going? see like what's what's going on what's gonna happen in like five years from now mm -hmm. um i want to do way more art i want to go into fashion and then yeah. i don't know when i'm when i'm like unk status old i want to go into like film or like more directing shit i don't know i just want to go more creative i always i just like as soon as the music shit gets boring we switch to art even yes. this outfit right now, bro. Like, what is you <laughs> wearing today? Like, look at this fit. This is crazy. Like, what's going this on is, today? I think this is the shirt I wore in teeth. It's a uh, um. Get out. Yeah, it's a uh, uh. Fuck, I'm forgetting the name. Infante Rich de Prim's um shirt that's like from I don't know. I think it's like the 2018 or something. And I just got some pants on and boots, but yeah. I'm going to be 100 with you. Like if you started a fashion line, like I would be on that like ReeseFashion.com. I want to, I want to go more into that shit. Cause it, literally as soon as the music shit doesn't like stop scratching my brain, it's like, it's going to be fashion designs. So and that's going to be like, I don't know, maybe like race cars or some shit. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Let's go. Race cars, buy them, Toys R Us. <laughs> Toys R Us is so you have to explain the origin of the fuzzy hats. 
How many yeah. do you have? Is it just one, or do you have a whole oh. collection? Uh-oh. Why did you start? See how many I can find. Do you want me to see how many I can find? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Okay. Okay, one sec. So we have. Dun, dun, sec, dun, I'll, dun, 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 I'll put you over here so you can see me digging through. Uh oh. That one. We have. <laughs> this one. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, this one's cute. I don't really wear this one. We have four too. Let's go. The Reese hat. I think I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I started wearing the hats because I was like. I think I have a tweet from like when I was 17. I was like, what are the hats called that like go over your ears? I want one. <laughs> and it's like a funny tweet because like. And now it's like your thing. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I didn't know what they were called. They're called Yushankas. Yushanka? Uh, Yushankas, yeah. I think I pronounced it wrong. Is it like Alaskan? Like where do you, where is it? Oh, uh, Russian. It's like, they, they oh. wear them a bunch of Russia. You can wear them up like this, but I feel like it's too, this one looks a little too crazy. That's crazy. I look like a, like a cowboy of the. Of the, a cowboy of the winter i don't know <laughs> are you going to be touring anytime soon we have to um yes i think there should be any um, american dates in the future yeah i want to get a bigger because i just did a, a small u.s headline with like a like four stops i want to do a way bigger one because four stops is not enough and i don't know i love tour anytime i'm off tour i'm always like fuck when am i going back on tour i miss it i, right. I don't know me and jordan yeah. we're gonna be there we're gonna be there Hell yeah. You're gonna I'm notice sorry, people right. have those hats, right, Jordan? Oh my god, I need I need a whole crowd. No, that, that's bro, that's the sweat. Bro, you should make pit. a line like with the, the sweatiest hat. Sweatiest pit ever. Oh you my god. Make a line of just those hats. That would be crazy. Like you start like a whole thing. Like that's come back. The, the, like limited the, edition. Thing like, in a year. This needs to come back like in a year from now. There needs to be on some this. merch. Yo, on some merch type. Actually, thing. okay. That's Trade crazy. No, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Well, Reese, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Florida Core, what's up with that? Florida You've invented Core. that. I I am Florida. I, I am the embodiment of Florida. So, no, nah, but I, I grew up in Florida. I was born and raised in Orlando, and I've lived in a bunch of different places in Florida, never moved anywhere else. So I, I decided to take the branding um, you have to of rep the project. It and just make it about my roots and what I knew. So we've been leaning into Florida core, you know? With the alligators, you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Like people just yeah. have alligators as like pets and stuff. It's like wild there. I know, I have like a few friends down here that are Canadian. We're trying to oh. um, spot some gators in the wild for them, you know? Yeah, well, speaking of alligators, let's talk about more than dead to me because that's a big one right there that's like the follow-up from the zombie ep right yeah like, yeah the post -post single. <clears throat> yep so how did you start that like what does the title mean mm, the title so more than dead to me as an album is about death grieving okay. loss change rebirth so rebirth this is what it's all about because as humans, we're all guaranteed this shared experience of death and dying and coping with that. And um, the way that I look at it is that it doesn't have to be like the death of a loved one. It like death comes in so many different forms. Death can be a breakup. Death can be your dog dying. Death could be moving to a new city that you're uncomfortable with. And it's like all these things are it, death represents change. And so that's what the more than dead to me thing is about is kind of like going through something in my life that was uh, grieving a loss um, from a bunch of different angles, however you want to look at it and overcoming that change and dealing with it and then kind of killing off my old self to rebirth into this new person uh, in a glow up type of way. Let's go with the glow up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what is true? Every time there is a rebirth, quote unquote, like why is there a glow up? Like what's that about? You know what I mean? It's that uh post breakup glow up, you know, like it just happens, wow. you know. You start you start prioritizing only yourself. Like I feel like anytime I get out of a relationship, I'm like, okay, let me just focus on me. Start like I start eating better, I start sleeping better, I'm like, you know, being healthy, going to the gym, like that kind of stuff, like 
taking care of my body and and naturally just it's a glow up okay so one thing that if you don't already know max is like executive producer if not the only producer on most of your or all of your tracks how did you start yeah. what was your like production um, journey yeah i i went down a really long path of the production grind i started almost yeah about 10 years ago i started um i was making electronic music doing edm um i wanted to be a dj like the That's classic crazy. Like, I, wanted, I wanted to play the festivals and do all that stuff and did you have an alligator uh, floaty for a dj like so yeah <laughs> <laughs> i wanted to do all that like edc all that stuff ultra um and then i think like as i got better at producing my music taste was also changing so the stuff that i wanted to make started to feel a lot more indie it was still the electronic scene but way more indie electronic nothing like mainstream or you know edm i guess and then it started changing more and more and then about you know four or five years ago i started going really indie started learning the guitar um making like way less electronic stuff and then like two years ago i was like okay i've been producing now for like eight years I'm kind of tired of just being behind the scenes. I want to like be in the spotlight more with this project and have it taken seriously. So I was like, all right, I got to learn how to sing. And so I just started, you know, yelling on the mic and figuring out my voice and stuff, which was like a brutal process of like a year of making just terrible music. Um, and then like, yeah, the first EP, So Close to Okay, was like what snapped for me of like, oh, I like this sound. I don't hate my vocals on it. Like, let's run it and yeah so then it's just been a prog like a process like that so when it comes to producing like the first ep was all produced by me and um because that got some traction i you know had the ability to then still produce the next album but like collab with a lot of other producers to kind of elevate my sound and so that's how i approach it now is like i'll still i'll always have songs that are fully produced and written by me but at the same time, like now that I have access to a lot um, more, it's nice to start a song or work with and co-produce with different people. Um, and then like I can go on the back end once the song has been co-produced and I can, you know, mess it up and make it like truly mine. Um, so, yeah, like it, him, right, Max? What was Fred again doing, like prior to like, you know, him kind of like popping off Fred again? He was, what was he doing? I think he was producing like other things before his own project. I have no idea, but that wouldn't surprise me at all because he was so like, like I'd never heard of him, you know, I think he was exactly. very- like, where'd he come from? But he was like- yeah. uh, And crazy. it just, he probably was writing for other people and producing, you know, and then now he's having his moment. Damn. All right, right. speaking of like, also so close to okay, can we talk about zombie for a second? Because a lot of people love that song as, yeah. It's a lot of people, a lot of people love it. <laughs> <laughs> that song wasn't written about a specific person. That song was about a relationship and kind of like comparing relationship to somebody changing from a human into a zombie. So it's kind of like that, wow. honey, that honeymoon phase in the beginning. Wow. of every relationship where you're just infatuated with this person um that's the first chorus them. yeah oh you like me how exciting blush smiling that's the first chorus. so then you're kind of taken to the second chorus where it changes um to this is an ugly relationship now this is toxic so it's this pretty person that is now i guess bitten or whatever and is transforming into this zombie into this like terrifying thing um so it's really just like symbolism for a zombie comparing a zombie to a relationship so like the full cycle of a relationship start to finish is that your favorite song to perform or is that like becoming your least favorite song to perform because it's like so popular that's a good question i i think because so many people it's the biggest song i have so a lot of people at the show some like some people are just there for that like that's the only song they like really have heard um so i think it'll always be fun for me to perform it because i see how excited people get and that kind of gives me the energy um i haven't had my moment yet where i'm like oh i'm tired of this you know um it's fun every time for me but it, it's not my favorite song to perform i gotta say yeah what is your favorite song to perform 
my favorite song to perform is either Stain or Rose Interlude. So yeah. Rose Interlude has a lot of um, start slow and then has a crazy build. Um, so I like to kind of calm down with the crowd and get really low and then let's go, up, you know, and start moshing. Yeah, and then staying, you know, is just the classic drop D like fat, super fast song. So that one is just so fun to scream. Okay, yeah. Max, what about thanks so much that tour? Because you're on a break from the tour between yeah. tours now. So what's that experience been like for you? And like how like what's the the true life behind tour, you know, tour life and being thanks so much and just everything in the indie scene it, right it, now? It was a lot. I, I think obviously when i got the opportunity i was so excited i'm a big fan and um going on tour gave me so much experience in that in that world um that was my first tour where i really went on the road for you know two to three weeks yeah. um so i felt like i kind of like earned my stripes a bit from that and um gave me a lot of insight on what to prepare for when it comes to big tours and stuff. And then on top of that, like, thanks so much. Like Carter himself is like a sweetheart. Like he is so nice and the whole team is so nice. Um, we all got along great. Like everyone in the band is really cool and they're all like very like-minded musicians, you know? So having all that combined made it like a really great run. I just feel like the beef that you have right now with Drake is just so crazy because like Listen. out of everybody, you know, like, you know, cause you're indie and Drake's like rap. So it just kind of like, you know what I mean? Well, it's kind of crazy that Drake was stealing my flow. That's the whole thing. Like, and now I, I just can't, I can't fuck with OVO like that. And That's after cool. all, after all of the news with Kendrick and stuff, like it just makes it even sadder for him, you know, but obviously he's been staying quiet. So I think that there's multiple reasons he's staying quiet. Is That's all I'll say on that. That's all I'll speak on that. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Max Fry. That was amazing. What is next for you? I know that you're in writing mode right now. You, you, yep. You've got a, a lot of things going on. But, like, what's – are we making a new album? What's I don't want to call it an album just yet because yeah. right now – I think right now I'm just trying to make as many songs as possible. So I, my flow right now with my two friends that are here is just producing as many songs as we can. And then in my own time, I will write on them. I think once I start writing on everything um, and figuring out what the album is going to be about, I'll feel better about calling it like an actual album or writing mode or whatever. But yeah. for right now, it's like, let me just get as many songs started as possible in between these two legs of the tour and then yeah gonna hit europe in august um, in the UK, and then um after that i'm not really sure i just want to keep touring as much as possible and then hopefully i'll have time after august to kind of conceptualize an album and start releasing singles and just promoting those singles and then you know have an album out hopefully like end of this year early next year i guess but like definitely singles this fall that was reese and mr max fry um here for you today on this indie special and stay tuned for more episodes to come and possibly more specials to come and yeah lots of love mm -hmm.